stare at this 3D design for a few seconds, and those cubes you're seeing, they'll flip to a different direction. Whether you saw an illusion or a three-dimensional design, if you've got a table saw and some blue painter's tape, I'll show you how to make this keepsake box. Hey there, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make this cherry keepsake box. It has a three-dimensional design, and all of these diamonds have to be cut precisely. To do that, I'll show you how I make a real simple jig to cut those. Inside, I've lined it with velvet, and also there's a lip around here that keeps the top from sliding off. It's kind of tricky to make, but I'll show you a really easy way to do it. So let's get out to the shop and have some fun. What I've done is I've cut some strips to one inch wide and about three sixteenths of an inch thick. I've got walnut, maple, and cherry. First thing we need to do is make the 30 degree jig to cut the diamonds. This is three quarter inch plywood with a piece of quarter inch plywood just glued to the bottom of it. It's about 15 inches long. You can make it whatever length you'd like to. First thing I'll do is attach this to the miter gauge. And then I'm going to set this to 30 degrees. This is the key to getting these things right. I've got a little digital gauge here. So I'm going to set it against there and put it against the blade. I'm going to put my lock in on my miter gauge just to see how close it is. And it's right at 30 degrees. So I'm going to lock my miter gauge down there. Now I'm going to raise the blade up the height of this. Next, I'm going to take my one inch wide piece of strip, set it against the blade, and bring the fence over so it just is a nice snug fit against the blade. Now I'll take the jig loose from the miter gauge, slide it over until it's against the fence, everything is good and tight, and then I'll reinstall the screw. Slide the fence over. And raise the blade, oh, it's maybe about an inch, and then I'll make another cut. I've added just a little triangle right there as a fence. Slide it against the little stop, and away we go. Now it's time for a, some assembly. I've cut a 30 degree V in this quarter inch sheet of plywood. I've drawn some lines on here to help me orient the grain direction on this maple uh, diamond. It's hard to tell sometimes, so I can lay it on here like that, and I can see the grain direction is running correctly. So when I move it over here, I'll be right. So I've got the drain, grain direction. Drop that in, push it against that little wall there. Next comes the cherry piece, then comes the walnut piece. Push those all together. Take a little piece of blue tape, press them together. Now I've got a nice perfect cube. Now it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This is the piece of quarter inch plywood I'm going to fasten the cubes to. First thing I have to do is find the center. Next, I need to take a square and put a square line, a straight line right down from the center all the way through. Now the next thing is I need to take one of these squares and line it up with that point, and then I'll put a mark right down here at this edge. Next, I'll take my square, and put a line all the way across. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I, wanted, I want the center of this to be where the first cube is going to go. 
Now the point in the center of this cube is exactly in the center of this. So I'm going to just work out from there. It's very important that when you cut this piece of plywood out that you make it oversized and these edges are all square because once these cubes get put on here, well, I'm going to trim it all the way around and it just makes it a lot easier to get a straight cut if this is already cut square. First step, I'm going to mount the very first one and it's very important that you get these all in the correct direction going the same way that you don't flip one because once it's glued on there's no changing it. And also I don't think, I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, it's very very important that the grain on all three of these pieces on the cube runs the same direction on all of them. I'm going to use uh, Tight Bond CA glue. I'm just going to put a drop on on each one of the blocks and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to align it with this center line left and right and the center line that goes this way. So now this is centered right in the overall picture. So to make sure that this is lined up properly I'm just going to take two other pieces put them in there and now I've got something that can hold this in place while I glue this one. So that one looks pretty good so I'll work that way. You have to work kind of quickly because this super glue will dry fast. Now let's see I'll go down one. We'll put one right in there. Okay, now I'll just keep going out. That looks like a good tight fit. All right, I've glued some of these down and I've decided that I'm going to cut it along this line right here and along that line right there and across the bottom and the top. So I'll have four cubes across and three cubes down. I've cut out a piece of cardboard so I can get an idea of what I'm looking at. As I put it on there, I've got these open spaces around the bottom and the top. Now I've added the diamonds to the bottom of the design. I want to cut this about a quarter of an inch wide on each side to fit into a groove in the box top. I'm going to cut this before I put these pieces on here so I've got a good straight edge to put against the fence. Now I'll put the diamonds on this side, run it through the saw again, and then I'll have it cut to the exact width. Now I've got a clean edge on the top and the bottom. Next is to cut the ends. When I put these boxes in, I just put a dab of glue in the center of each uh, piece of wood. Well, now that I'm cutting it off, there's no glue out here at the edge, so it popped the piece out there and two little triangles here. Uh, this piece I can find it on the ground, and the other little pieces I can make a little wedge to fit in there. Anyway, that's going to be covered up all the way to there in the groove anyway. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now we'll move on to the next step. Now let's build the box. All right, I've planed this board to a half inch thick. I've sanded it to 150. Now I want to cut it to three and three quarters of an inch wide. I've cut the board into rough length. Now I need to put a groove inside this box to set the top in. Sand this down to the thickness I need. And I'm going to use this to adjust the blade height. I want the edge of the box to come right to that. So what I do is I'll set this up there, raise the blade height just a little past that so it gives me a little bit of wiggle room in that groove. Just a little bit of cleanup in that groove and ready to go. I've cut all the pieces uh, to 45 degrees on one end. 
Now I need to fit them to the panel. I would rather sneak up on this cut than make a measurement and cut it and take a chance of being wrong. So what I do is I slide this panel out so there's just a little bit of room right there. And I'll measure from the end of the panel to the end of that board. And it is right at a quarter of an inch, okay? So I come around this side and I'll mark a quarter of an inch away from the panel. Now I'll continue this line straight across and then I'll take this 45 degree gauge and from that line I'm just going to draw a mark like that. So that is where I should make my cut. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak up on this 45 degree line until I get it just right. Okay, I've cut to that line that I've drawn, almost to it, and it's about that much short, so I've got to keep going. Okay, that's my last cut. They're the same. So now what I'll do is I'll take this board, put it on my table saw, and put a stop block on my miter gauge and cut the other side to match this. Next, I'm going to cut the groove on the inside for where the top will come off of the box. I'm setting this up. I've got an eighth inch wide blade and it's a quarter of an inch above the surface. That's exactly half of this thickness. I've got it set an inch and a quarter down from the top. Now I'll run all four of these boards through. Now that that groove is cut, it's very important at this point, take your square and put it at the bottom of this kerf you just cut. Now lock that square in. Uh, now you can put that away and uh, not use it until you're ready to cut the outside of the box, or you can flip the box over and take a pencil and make a line on there. Because after this box is assembled, you have to cut this box top off and it needs to be exactly at the bottom of this so that you end up with a lip that this top can set down on. I've put uh, blue tape on the inside to keep any glue squeeze out from going inside the box. I don't know if you ever have a problem with this with your uh, glue bottle. That thing sticks and you can't get it open. 5 8 inch open end wrench pops it right up. I leave that laying right beside my glue bottle. All right, now then we're just going to start wrapping this thing up. I've marked it. I want this to be the front of the box, and I've also marked on the back of this that I want this to be to the front. <clears throat> so I'm going to put that in there first, and then the bottom. Just fold it up on it. When I do this, I like to put it <clears throat> into a square. That just helps helps it go together. Okay, there it is. All I got to do is wait for the glue to dry, and then and then we got to cut this top off. And I hope I don't mess up that cut line. Now the moment of truth. This is always a scary part for me. I left the blade set at the height of when I cut the inside groove in the box. That dimension that I made with the square, I kept that and I've set that so that the inside of the blade is that dimension away from the fence. Now it's just a matter of hoping we got it right. Okay, now it didn't pop off, but I'm pretty sure that just with a couple little slices of a knife along that edge right there, and this top will come off. There we go. Now I've got a lip right here, and I've got a recess in here. Once I clean this up, 
all the way around there well this will just sit right back down on there and it will register itself right there so I'm happy with that okay I've spent some time doing the finished sanding on the box and also I cleaned this edge up in here and then I had to trim this edge just a little bit I used just a small block plane and some sandpaper knock off these corners right here and now I've got a good tight fit it almost just disappears across there so I'm pleased with that next step is finish now I'm going to start applying some finish on the inside of the box I'm going to use this uh, bullseye shellac it's made by Zinzer you can get this at uh, big box stores I'm going to spray the inside of the box with the shellac because it doesn't have an odor. I'm going to finish the outside with an oil-based finish, and if I put that on the inside, that odor will stay in there for a long, long time. The shellac is dry on the inside. Now I'm going to finish the outside. What I'm using is Minwax uh, Wipe On Poly. Uh, I really like this product for small things like boxes. I put some in a container and I've just taken a t-shirt, cut it up and made a nice little applicator. The first coat you can put on is sort of heavy and let it soak into the grain. The next coat you don't do nearly as heavily as that. Let that dry and and that's just beautiful. Now it's time to line that box. <clears throat> I'm starting with a piece of just regular poster board and a piece of some really nice red velvet. I'm going to glue that onto the poster board. On the back of the poster board I have two pieces of blue tape that's just rolled up so it'll be sticky up. I'll explain that in a second. I'm going to spray it with a 3M uh, spray adhesive. Now this is why I've got the adhesive on the back. I don't want this piece of poster board moving around when I put the velvet on. Now this can be challenging, but I just kind of slide it up here, get it as close and lined up to the edge as possible. As soon as it hits that sticky stuff, why well, it'll start sticking down and then just slowly drop it down on there so you don't have any wrinkles like that and just sort of slowly press it to the outside. Now what I've got is a piece of poster board with some velvet stuck to it. Now I'm going to cut this to size. This piece of poster board, I know that this is square, so I'm going to get two straight lines. I'm using a roller, a fabric roller cutter. This thing works great for this project. I've got a straight line this way and I'm going to do the same the other way. Now I'll measure the box and I'm going to get the width first and the width is five and three quarters. So mark five and three quarters. Yeah, that's a good cut. That's a good fit that way. Now we do it the lengthwise and that is seven and fifteen sixteenths. Oh yeah, that's what I like right there. I like that fit. Now, I'm also going to do this on the top. There's one thing that I've done several times on jewelry boxes is to take a very thin piece of foam and put between this poster board and the velvet and you get a nice little soft spongy feel to the velvet. Check out some of my other videos and hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you on my next one.